So, um, okay, so with that, let's uh, move on to the next topic, which are skeleton diagrams, okay? Kinematic or skeleton diagrams. Okay, so um, we have uh, basically a, a kinematic or skeleton diagram, also called a stick diagram, is basically what engineers use uh, to draw mechanisms because, you know, when they can't draw, right? So the engineers are horrible artists, so instead of having to, you know, CAD these or draw these by hand, it's like, hey, let's just do some simplified stick diagrams so everyone knows what we're talking about, uh, but we don't need to be good artists, okay? So, and the reason I'm teaching this is because it's all in the textbook, and anytime you study mechanisms, um, this is kind of like shorthand for mechanism designers, uh, you know, you might have to analyze drawings and stuff, and, and you need to know how to read these skeleton diagrams. So that's what the point of this next topic is, is teach you how to read these, okay? But, you know, okay, look, a definition, it's written on the slide. These are the simplest diagrams that still retain all the kinetic properties of the mechanism. So you can still analyze all the ways it can move, um, but uh, you don't have to waste time drawing it. And if I teach you this, everyone will be on the same page. Okay, so a couple conventions, um, you know, like I said, oftentimes in stick diagrams, they'll make entire links just a single line. That's a very simple way to draw a link. It's just a simple line like you saw on the last slide. But oftentimes that doesn't work because those links might have multiple joints on it and it actually requires some two-dimensionality instead of just a single line. So when that's the case, to also still be able to draw poorly um, and to make stick diagrams, sometimes what they'll do is, you know, you can see there's like a wedge there stuck onto another link, you know, labeled two by a revolute joint there. What they do is they'll either color in the wedge with, with hatch lines there, or if they're even too lazy to do that, then what they'll do is, um, is you know, is, is draw this little half uh, circle or curve here to say those two lines are the same part of the same link. Okay, so if that if this this little curve wasn't there, then these would be two different links. Uh, is how you'd interpret the skeleton diagram. But since they're kind of drawn together with this, um, or you can see up here in the top right, they can hatch the inside of that uh, as well. So these are just some conventions. Another way you can tell how many links there are is sometimes the book or people will label them with numbers. Here, you know, if there's just two numbers listed for these things, then there's just two links, right? And so, and another convention just to keep in mind of while I'm thinking of it is usually number one is the link that's grounded or held fixed, and two is usually the input link, but we'll, we'll talk about this later. But anyway, the, the point is you can know these all have just two links because they're numbered just one and two, okay? But if they weren't numbered, and oftentimes they aren't, you can still know they're two links because I just taught you the convention, okay? Okay, so here is example of three links. So if I had a line with a circle, another line, you can know these are three independent links that can rotate around this uh, revolute joint. And you can also know there's three links there because it's labeled one, two, three, okay? But a little trick here, what if, what if uh, you know, you need to draw something that's in a line, but it's not two links, it's one single continuous rigid bar um, that never rotates around this joint, but there's a, a revolute joint in the middle. Well, the way you deal with that is you draw a square or a half circle here, or you can color it in or hatch it or whatever. But what that is, is it's a bridge that represents that these two seeming independent links are now are really just one and the same link. So you bridge them together. So now you can see here, even though this looks almost identical to this, uh, you know, because of this bridge here, there's two links. And we label this one you know, you can see it's the same number. They, they often won't be that kind, uh, but they'll, they'll expect you to interpret that. Um, so you know that's two links instead of one. Okay, so of course engineers don't want to draw gears because they have a lot of teeth and they're actually quite complicated to draw the involute profiles of the teeth. So to simplify them for skeleton diagrams, uh, they just draw circles like this, okay? And if it's an external gear, you'll draw this. Sometimes they draw the arrows in the direction to show how they're moving. And these are internal gears, and you can see they draw an arrow there. Okay, but that's that's pretty clear. So if you see circles in this class, they are uh, gears. Okay, so um, pin joints, pin and slot joint. Okay, um, here's you know uh, we've kind of looked at this. The green thing here is the link, and it's got a pin coming out of it that's fixed to it. And then behind it, you have this other link with a slot in it. 
And remember, for two-dimensional planar mechanisms, that has two degrees of freedom, the translation of the slot and rotation. And it's a higher pair, remember, because it's just lying, it's, it's touching just at two lines. And you assume they're not pressed against each other because then it would be touching the surface. Um, but, you know, pin joints are regarded as, as higher pairs, okay? But, but that's not the point. The point is, um, here is one way you can draw a skeleton diagram to represent this, okay? So here they actually uh, took the time to draw the bar for link two, and they do a circle for the pin, but then they were super lazy for link one and just drew a line with like kind of a slot on it. So it's a really weird way to do it, but when you see that, that means a pin and slot, okay? You can imagine uh, one would move with those two degrees of freedom, okay? So slider joints are actually really confusing, especially when you think about how you show in a, uh, or prism joints, uh, or slider joints, right? When you, when you um, compare it with uh, how things are drawn in skeleton diagrams for fixed or grounded bodies, okay? So I'll show you he here, uh, all these examples, everything above here is a slider prism joint where you could draw it in a skeleton diagram. The top, they actually took the time to draw the two different links and label them, so that one's actually clear. Um, th that means they slide kind of transverse with each other, okay? This is a little lazier way to do it, just a straight line with a box on top. That means, again, it's a slider prism joint and that you can think of that box sliding on top of that other link. That's two links and nothing's particularly grounded in any of these. Um, if it's a spatial three-dimensional mechanism, they might have a box on a line, but put an X in it, meaning it can, it can only slide along that line, but it's a spatial mechanism, that is, so it may not stay on the plane. You'll never really confront those in this class because they're sticking to planar mechanisms, but it's something to be aware of. Um, more common is just the line goes right through it, so you can think of a box on the line sliding along its line, kind of like this. You can see here, this is, this is a link that slides on the white link. The black one slides on the white one. This is a gym machine, a, a slider a prism joint here. You can kind of see where this came from. And then another thing, if you have a box on a line with hatches there, that means this bottom link is ground, but the box can slide on top of it, okay? So now here's where it gets really confusing because if it's just a box without a line with hatch things on it directly, that means that box is a grounded, held, fixed thing and it's not a joint. It's just a link that's grounded, okay? So really the difference between this and this is you extend the lines and put the hatch lines outside of it, okay? Um, and and uh, you know, and that's, that's how you differentiate there. Um, the other confusing thing is if, if they ever round this box's top corners, like a circle or something, then even though this looks almost the same as this and you think, well, this guy slides on it, just because they rounded it, this is grounded and held fixed. It's not a slider joint or a prism joint. Um, and another trick is if they just did this and did this kind of thing, you might think it slides, but it, nope, it's not. This is also fixed and this is also fixed. Okay, so be very careful to look for the rounded top corner. That usually means it's not a prism or sliding joint, that it's, it's directly held fixed um, by these hatch lines, okay? Um, so, so yeah, anyway, it's a little confusing. And honestly, not all the conventions hold true. So sometimes you just have to ask your teacher what it is or the engineer or uh, use your common sense and say, would anyone design a mechanism that uh, you know, is just grounded there or should it be sliding? and then do your best guess. But this is the most confusing thing in skeleton diagrams. Okay, kinds of links. Okay, um, so, um, and it, with this we're almost done with the first little video installment here. Um, okay, so, you name links, the rigid bodies, according to how many joints are on it. Okay, and it's just the number of joints, okay? So a binary link is a link with, not surprising, two joints. That's by means two, right? So um, in this case, we have this, uh, this uh, you know, uh, I guess it's not a mechanism because it's not a closed thing, but we have three links, and uh, these two are joined together by this revolute joint, those two are joined together by that revolute joint. But this one in the middle here, it has two joints on it, two revolute joints. It doesn't matter how many degrees of freedom they have, it doesn't matter whether it's lower or higher or order pair. It does, none of that matters. It just it has two joints on it, so it's a binary link. Okay, so here are other examples of binary links. This is a box that slides on this other link. This line here is a link, and that box slides on it with a prism joint. 
And then on the box, there's a revolute joint that links to another link that can rotate, okay? So if you're just looking at this box link, how many joints does it have on it? It has a prism, a sliding joint, and it has a revolute joint that's two joints. That's a binary link. It has nothing to do with the degrees of freedom. It has nothing to do with lower or higher pairs, anything. It's just how many joints on it. This is another one that's, again, a, a link here and a box, another link that's sliding on it. But uh, here's another skeleton diagram trick. Instead of drawing the box actually all the way down here to, circum you know, to, to have the revolute joint on it, they just draw this little piece down here. But j just imagine this is all totally rigid and locked up and they were just lazy and the, rev you know, the revolute joint was down far. And then that's another link coming off of it. So this one has two joints on it, the sliding prism joint and the revolute rotational joint as well. So it's a, they're, they're all binary links. Okay, another kind of link is a ternary link. Okay, and a ternary link, not surprising, is a link with three joints on it. Okay, so here this is the clearest one in the top left. You see a link and there's three circles on it for three revolute joints. That's got three, so it's a ternary link, okay? The one in the middle there, uh, it, you might think, if you just saw it drawn like that without those curves, you know, like this curve up here and the other three curves, then, then uh, you know, like, like you see on the far right, then that would not be a ternary link because there's three links in there and they're each binary links, right? But once you connect them with this little curve, that says they're, they're one and the same link. So because that triangle, those lo three lines in that triangle in the middle have those curves, they're essentially one and the same link and you'll note there's three circles on the corners and those three circles are three joints, and so it's a ternary link. Now, like I just said, the one on the far right is not a ternary link, um, you know, which is a little confusing because of this slide. It, it is not classified as a ternary link. It's actually three binary links connected together uh, like a truss, okay? But the reason it's like on the same line and these like lines show that it's like equivalent is because it moves the same way, okay? It behaves as if it's a ternary link. Okay, and basically has zero degrees of freedom. So if you look at this one, just going back to our definition, if I asked you, is this a mechanism? You'd say, well, okay, does it consist of multiple links connected together? Yes, there's three of them, one, two, three. And okay, uh, are they connected together by you know, joints? Uh, yes, they are, there's three revolute joints, okay? And uh, is one of them held fixed? Well, sure, I could hold, number one is usually the ground it's held fixed, okay? Um, is it a closed kinematic chain? Yes, it is. It's a closed, nice chain. But then the final one, does it move? No, it doesn't. It's a structure. It's static. So it's not a mechanism. It's a static structure, which is why it behaves as one single uh, link. Because it has zero degrees of freedom. It, it would behave exactly the same as these other two, which is why you see the equivalent sign. But just so you know, only these two would be classified as ternary links because right, the other one is three, three binary links combined together. Okay, here's another example of a ternary link. We're pointing to this link below here, so ignore all this. Uh, you know, the prism uh, sliding joint between this line and the box is one joint, and then you see two circles on its two ends. That's two other revolute joints, and so that's three total joints. That's a ternary link. Okay, this one, remember with, with a bridge, that basically, you know, you might think, oh, look, there's there's two binary links connected together a revolute joint, uh, but you say, no, 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 because of the bridge, um, this is one and the same rigid body uh, that's all connected together, and you can see there's three joints on it. One, two, three, three revolute joints, so it's a ternary link. Okay, here's other examples of ternary links and skeleton diagrams. This is really bizarre how this is drawn, but uh, people draw it like this, so you know, this big, you know, all these boxes and these, these half circles, that's all one link, and they slide on this link that goes all the way through it. They slide on this link that goes through it, and then there's a revolute joint. So that, like, cross here is a ternary link because it has three joints. It has two prism joints and a revolute joint. Okay, so that's a ternary link. Okay? Now, this guy here, this circle here, you know, um, which this says it's pure rolling, right? So it might be a gear or something, is, is uh, you know, connected to this grounded point. You know it's ground because of the hatching there. And then two other links there, okay, by revolute joints, okay? So you ask yourself, how many, ha you know, 
first of all, whether this said rolling or not, it, it doesn't matter. If it didn't say rolling, then you'd assume it can roll and slide. That means you could imagine this just shearing along like, you know, when you drive your car, the wheels are rolling, but when you slam on the brakes, if your car keeps moving forward, the, the wheels are sliding. So um, if this is not constrained to just roll, then it could roll and slide. So it's two degrees of freedom down there. But again, what makes something a ternary link has nothing to do with the degrees of freedom. Because if you had a degrees of freedom, it's like there's a rotation here, rotation here, rotation and possibly sliding. So four degrees of freedom, right? But here, if they say rolling, then it's only rolling. It'd be three degrees. Of but like I said, doesn't matter degrees of freedom. You got to ask yourself how many joints are on this. Well, there's one joint here, one joint here, and just one joint there, whether it's two degrees of freedom or not. And so since there's three joints, it's ternary link. Okay, so quaternary link. Okay, obviously that's a link with four uh, joints on it. You can see there's four revolute joints on there. Okay, and again, if you go to the one in the middle, um, you might be tempted to think there's four different links, but there's not because of these curved surfaces or the, you know, these little curves inside saying they're all one and the same link. And therefore, since it's one and the same link and it's got four joints on it, it is a, or, 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 a quaternary link. Okay. But now, if you leave out these curves, okay, then you have to assume that there are four different binary links. Each one has two joints connected to it, or on it, right? Uh, revolute joints in this case. And this is not the same. So not only is it not a quaternary link because it's four binary links, but it also doesn't move the same. Okay, this is a true mechanism and actually a linkage because it consists of rigid bodies. They're connected by movable joints. There's a ground, okay, that's held fixed, which is one, and it's a closed kinetic chain, and it can certainly move. Think of a four bar, can move back and forth. So it definitely has, uh, you know, a degree of freedom. And so, whereas these ones don't, okay. So, uh, so anyway, just in in contrast to the last ternary example. So you're understanding these definitions. And of course, it's a linkage, this one on the right, because it has lower pairs um, and it's a mechanism. OK, so now we go to other examples here. Um, OK, this is not a quaternary link, OK, because it, it consists of three, OK, uh, uh, you know, links. Okay, this link would be a binary link. This link would be a binary link. And this link, remember it's bridged together, would be a ternary link, one, two, three. Okay, so you would not classify this as a quaternary link. It's a, it's, and you would not classify it as a ternary link. Um, it, you would classify it as one ternary link and two binary links, okay? And that's because there's three joints on this ternary link and two joints on this one, binary link and two joints on that binary link, okay? The reason there's this equal sign is because this would have no degrees of freedom. It would act as if it's a rigid link with four points on it. And so this would be kinematically equivalent to a quaternary link, okay? And same with this. The only difference between this and this is that we gave this an angle. So you see, you can bridge things that aren't straight if you need to draw an angle there. But if there's a square or a circle or a bridge thing or hatched in thing, that means this is one and the same thing. And notice these are both labeled one, which means they're the same link in their ground. Okay, so this, this would not classify as a quaternary link, just like this, this, and this don't. But it would behave like a quaternary link because it would all be locked up with no way to move and uh, it would have four joints on it. Okay, but again, on an exam, if I asked you, is this a quaternary link, you'd say no. It is uh, two binary links and one ternary link that behaves together like a quaternary link. Okay, so uh, the difference between analysis and synthesis, and then we'll be done with this first little video here. Okay, analysis, and, and you know, there's a lot of words on the slide, but it's, it's actually a really easy slide. It's, it, analysis is, I give you a mechanism. You know what the system is. Say it's a four bar, say it's a slider crank mechanism, whatever it is. I give you that mechanism, you can measure it, you know its lengths, you know everything about it. But then I tell you, you know, for an input, if I move the input link 20 degrees, say, you know, what's the position of all the other links? Okay, so, so you know the input, it's given, that's the 20 degrees thing, and you know the system, 
The question is, can you calculate the output, which is maybe the follower link, what angle is it at? Okay, how does it move? Or what speed is it going in? And these kind of things. That's analysis, okay? And that's what we're gonna largely spend our time doing in this course, okay? Now, design is a little more interesting, but much more complex, where you know the input and you know the output, but you don't know the system, you have to design it. So say, it's like, well, I want, you know, I have a black box, and I don't know what's in it, but I want some input link to move, and when it's 20 degrees, I want the output link to be 30 degrees. Um, and you know, at these different speeds, or these different accelerations, or whatever. Um, and uh, you know the input and output, and then you say, go design it. That's what people will likely do with consulting. They'll want you to design a mechanism that does what they want, okay? All right, so with that, uh, that wraps up this first video, um, and we'll continue on with the next video.